Hey everyone, it's Big Scribe here, and I am back with another book review. This time, it's a very special book review. It's a book review that really means a lot to me personally, because it kind of has to do with one of my most favorite childhood TV shows. That being Scooby-Doo. And if you've heard of this book, you're going to be pretty excited. It is Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. This recently came out, like literally this uh, this past or in July. This book came out. This is actually an advanced reader copy that I got a couple days before the book actually released, and I didn't get to finish it before the book's release. But mainly because this book kind of put me in a slump, and I'll explain why. But if you can look at the cover, it's not exactly Scooby Doo. It is Scooby Doo inspired. It is kind of a Scooby Doo retelling in a way. Kind of. But it's not really a retelling, because it's literally not Scooby-Doo. It's inspired by Scooby-Doo. And it's inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. And it's inspired by all things weird and creepy and a little vulgar. This book has a lot happening in it. This book is not for kids, so if you are under the age of 18, I kind of suggest that you not read this, because it's a little vulgar and a little out there. It's a little mature. I wouldn't consider this a young adult read. I would consider this more new adult, I guess. But basically, it is about a group of friends in 1977. They are basically a mystery-solving gang, kind of like Scooby-Doo and the gang. They have a Weimar runner named Sean that is like their dog companion. And they go around solving mysteries and unmasking bad men. And one time in 1977... Their last case, it's a little different. It's not necessarily a man in a mask. It's something real and it's very scary. And it messes them up so badly that their lives kind of fall apart. And they stop being, being together as a group. And they split up and go their separate ways. Uh, like one ends up in a mental institution... Uh, one's in trouble with the law, one's an alcoholic, one kills himself. And it, it's just like these horrible, horrible side effects of of what's going on and of what happened. And they don't really talk about it. They all just pretend like it really was a guy in a mask. They don't want to admit that there was something more in that involved in that last case. Well, they finally reunite to figure out what happened that day and go back to the spot where their last case was. And that's what the book is about, is them going back to that island where their last case was. And it is pretty intense. And there is all kinds of stuff happening. But the main thing I didn't like about this book, I love the story. The story is great. The story was adventurous. It had its twists and its turns, and it kind of threw me off of who I thought the bad guy was. And, it, I mean, I always like that in a mystery. When a mystery throws me off and makes me second-guess myself, I think that's a good mystery. But, basically, um, the reason I didn't like it, necessarily, is because... He uses a lot of bad language. Edgar Cantero cusses a lot in this book. He, like, literally every other sentence is a cuss word, and it is so, so vulgar. Why can you not get your point across without cussing? I don't get that. It doesn't have to be F this, F this, F this all the time in every single sentence. And to me, that just kind of shows, like... A lack of vocabulary. It's just, that's not intelligent writing to me. I don't think intelligent writing uses a lot of cuss words. I mean, yeah, I get like Sarah J. Ma Mass and, and them have their cuss words, but not like this. This is like, what's a good example? This is like if Ozzy Osbourne wrote a book, this is what it would come out sounding like. It's, it's pretty vulgar and it's pretty out there. But it's still a good story, so I'm going to give it a 3, and yeah, that's kind of my lowest score I've ever given a book. Just because the story gripped me. The story did grip me, but I just I couldn't see past the cuss words, and it took me so long to finish this book because it was so graphic and so 
vulgar that it just kind of sickened me at times and I had to put it down. And, I mean, you guys know I have no ill will towards anybody of specific sexual preferences, but I just, I don't like when books are heavily, heavily homosexual, ho homosexually themed, and there is a character in this book that is very, 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 very open about her sexuality, and it just, it kind of gets a little mature content with it, and I just, I didn't enjoy that. But, I mean, it didn't take away from the story much to me, so I didn't really mind it as much as I did the language. The language really, really bothered me. But, all in all, this is still a good story. You should still give it a read. I'm still going to keep it on my shelf just because it was interesting to read a Scooby-Doo retelling. And I'm glad I got it as an arc because I, I just can't see myself paying full price for this book. I really can't. But, I mean, I'm sorry if Edgar Cantero ever watches my review, but man, you just, you need to lighten up on the bad language, and then people might enjoy your stories a little bit more, <laughs> I'm just saying. But, all in all, I love this book. I mean, it's still a good story, and it's still Scooby-Doo, and Tim did remind me a lot of Scooby-Doo, but he kind of reminded me of my dog, too. Watson's a lot like Tim in this book. Tim is the descendant of their original dog member of the team, and Tim is exactly like Watson, he, they're curious, he's curious, he's playful, he's a little presumptuous, <laughs> but I think it was interesting to, to see a different kind of Scooby-Doo, a new version of Scooby-Doo, a more modern version, and I, I still enjoyed it, all in all, and, I mean, come on. Let's just not ignore the H.P. Lovecraft kind of cover there. This is a beautiful cover. This is a beautiful book. I mean, and even the spine has, like, the, the satanic symbols on it and all that. It's pretty cool. But all in all, awesome book still. Just that language kind of irks me. Um... If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I actually am getting published in the August book loot box. So I am totally excited. One of my short stories called Protecting Neverland will be in the book loot box. So go ahead and get your book loot box and don't miss out because it is going to be epic. I cannot wait. And my next read and next review is going to be one of everybody's favorites, especially when it comes to Sarah J. Mass writing, A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass, and this book is a chunker. Now let's see how many pages this is, because I don't even remember. I know it's a lot. Yeah, 620 some pages. Yeah, that's, 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 that's too much. Um, 624 pages. Oh, man. But, yeah, I've already found out. This book can be intense. This, For some reason, this series is really sexy. And you should probably not read it in public because it makes you feel super awkward. Just saying. Don't ever read it at the dentist. <laughs> but I, I enjoy reading these books. I enjoy doing these book reviews. And I've been a little more active on Instagram than I have here on BookTube, and I want to change that. I know I don't got the best setup, I don't got the best lighting and all that, but you know what? I'm doing this for fun. I'm doing this for me, and if you guys enjoy it, that's, that's just a bonus, but I do it because I enjoy doing book reviews, and it's fun to me, but I hope I can do more. I did recently go to the mall and buy quite a bit of stuff, but I did my haul on... Instagram instead of on here, and I should have done it on here, but I got a copy of Jane Eyre because my friend Cody, who is uh, on Instagram at my bibliophilic life, that's my underscore bibliophilic underscore life, and she has the most awesome Instagram. I love watching her stories because she cracks me up, and I'm always laughing at her stories, but she is a huge Jane Eyre fanatic. 
so I went ahead and bought me a like a six dollar copy or a six dollar paperback of Jane Eyre, and I was I, I I showed it to her and I was like, well, I finally broke down and bought it, so now I can read it. <laughs> and so that's on my TBR is a copy of Jane Eyre, and eventually I'll get around to reading it because well, I kind of bought like. 13 books from Book Depository, and they're going to be here eventually. I got the entire, um, well, I'm not going to tell you everything, but I will tell you that somewhere in the 13 books is the entire Darker Shades of Magic series, which I'm excited to read, and it's the UK covers, and they're so pretty. I also got the UK covers of uh, this Savage Song duology, so I'm excited to read those as well. I, at the mall, I also got um, the new House of Night and Otherworld novel called Loved by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. You guys know I'm a huge House of Night fan, so I was excited when that book came out. I absolutely love PC Cast and Kristen Cast. They are some of the best writers ever, and I am totally excited. And I've also uh, been in contact with G.S. Denning, who wrote the Warlock Holmes series. My all-time favorite series. And he is hard at work on book three. And I think he said he just finished the first draft of book three. And I am totally, totally psyched to read book three. And I can't wait till he finishes it. Because Irene Adler is going to make her appearance. And he said he's had such such an interesting time creating that, creating a supernatural version of that character. And... I'm, I'm excited to see what he does with it, and I love that series. If you haven't read Warlock Holmes, A Study in Brimstone, or Warlock Holmes, The Hellhound of the Baskervilles, you need to get those books, because I'm telling you, anybody who reads those books is an instant fan. They are hilarious. They are the funniest books you will ever read in your entire life. And they, you just fall in love with them all. You fall in love with Sherlock, but well, Warlock, all over again. And like my, that's why my phone case is actually two two one B. I had to make it a Sherlock theme. If I could cross out the Sherlock thing on their little mailbox plate, I would put Warlock instead. But I had to get the two two one B door for my phone case. I just thought it was too perfect. Also, on my table, I got a candle that's uh, 221B uh, Baker Street, and it's from uh, Wiccan Fable on, on Etsy and Instagram. But I'm telling you guys, well, this turned into me rambling about all kinds of bookish stuff. I don't know how that happened, but anyway, I've got a bunch of books coming, and I actually got two more today. I got uh, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, and I got uh, And I Darken by Kirsten White. And I don't really know what Andi Darken is about. I do know a second book is coming out soon from that series. And I know The Book Thief is like 15, 25 years old, something like that. But it seems to be a pretty popular book on books on Bookstagram and on Booktube. So I went ahead and checked it out. And it sounds pretty interesting. So I went ahead and got it because it was only $5 shipped. It was on the Twitter Books for Trade thing. And... If you ever want to find some cheap books or some books that you can trade for books that you have that you might want to get rid of, uh, look up hashtag books for trade on Twitter. And sometimes people will give you books if you just pay the shipping. And that's what I did with uh, The Book Thief and, mm, excuse me, and And I Darken. Well, I think I paid like $2 for each book and $3 shipping for each. And it wasn't bad. Five dollar ship for both of those, and and I darken is the is the arc of it. So the arcs tend to be more valued to for by collectors. And I was pretty interested that it was an arc. I didn't know it was an arc. I thought it was just a regular book, <laughs> but I was surprised when I opened the package. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> but I am totally excited to get reading. Um. My next couple reads are going to be pretty awesome. I'm going to read Loved after I read Akamov. Then I'm going to read Empire of Storms. And then I'm going to finish the Miss Peregrine's trilogy because I have been putting those books aside way too long. And I really miss that world and I want to get back into that world. And let's be honest, I need a break from Sarah J. Mass because 
This this girl be trying to break my heart into pieces. I'm telling you, that writer just knows how to rip my soul out every time. But I can tell you this, Akimov, crazy sexy. Like I had to stop and read a portion to a friend of mine, and I was like, this this is intense. <laughs> And it's super awkward to be reading at the uh, dentist, especially when the dentist is leaning over you. <laughs> but uh, I can't wait to show you guys my haul. I will show you my book haul when it arrives. Also got some bookmarks coming from Inner Paper Forest and Whitney J. Reads. And isn't there somebody else? There's somebody else, but I can't remember the name of them. But the one that I can't remember is actually a scarf bookmark that is a Ravenclaw scarf, and it's a bookmark scarf, and it's kind of hard to explain. It's a little tiny scarf that you use as a bookmark, and it's so adorable, and you can get any of your Harry Potter houses, and I just had to get my Ravenclaw, and I cannot wait till it arrives. I'm so thrilled and excited, and I got like three different bookmarks from Inner Paper Forest, and I love all of her designs. I wish I could buy them all. But two of them are Peter Pan, and you guys know I'm a huge Peter Pan fan, and I begged her to make Peter Pan bookmarks, and when I saw them in her store, I was like, oh, snatching those up real quick. And one of them is, uh, the other one is a Harry Potter bookmark that I wanted to get. I should have got, man, I should have got that Lord of the Rings one. I don't know why I didn't. I might have to go back and get the Lord of the Rings one. Yeah, I'm going to go broke real quick this month. <laughs> But I also got some pops. I got some SDCC pops. I got Dean with Baby, the car from Supernatural. And it's up there with the Scooby-Doo gang and Cthulhu and all the monsters that I have on my top shelf up there. <laughs> I just kind of figured that Scooby-Doo and Dean and Baby kind of went along with the monsters. So kind of made sense in my head. Monster Hunters with the monsters. And then I've got, I got some new Marvel ones. I got Mojo Jojo from Powerpuff Girls. I got Simba with his lion's mane. I got the entire Rugrat set with the chases. Um, I got the Red Ranger with the dragon shield. And I got Clara from Doctor Who. I got so many pops here recently. And actually, uh, I got one on the way. I got the incredibly expensive, so expensive I don't even want to talk about it, Power Ranger Megazord. It is the SDCC Megazord Pop, and that thing was like super hard to find, and I had to go to Amazon to find it, <coughs> and Amazon was actually the cheapest place I found it, and I'm not even going to tell you how much it was, but I was so excited to find that one, so I'm probably going to move my Duck Dynasty set somewhere else. And put my Megazord where the Duck Dynasty set is. Because it has to be there near the Power Rangers. It just kind of makes sense in my head. But I will definitely be showing that off. Well, I'll probably show that off on my Instagram. So I'll, I'll put my Instagram name down there in the description. And go follow me. Once I, I'm doing a giveaway that actually ends tomorrow. Mm, excuse me. So it ends tomorrow at 5 p.m. So if you watch this before then, you can go ahead and go enter. But I will be doing a huge, huge giveaway at when I reach 500 followers. So if you have friends that follow book people on, book, on Instagram, then I would suggest you tell them, hey, go follow this guy. He's going to have this huge, huge giveaway at 500 uh, followers. And I'm going to, like, give away a candle from one of the companies that I like. I'm going to give away bookmarks, books, all kinds of stuff. We're going to have a big celebration when I reach 500 followers. So, seriously, be suggesting that people follow me. It's going to be epic. I've already got this huge thing planned. And the one the, the giveaway I got going on now is pretty cool. It's, uh, first prize is... Uh, your choice of a book, $16 or less from Book Depository, and your choice of bookmark from In a Paper Forest. And second prize is I send you a book of my choice from Book Depository. 
and I've already got the book picked out. So whoever gets second place, I've already decided your book. I decided it when I made that the prize. So I hope you enjoy it, and I probably discussed it at some point in this video. So I love you guys, and I hope you enjoyed my video. I'm sorry it kind of rambled on even after the review. I probably titled this video something like review of meddling kids blah 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 and then like half or more than half the video is me just discussing random things because apparently that's what I do I ramble and I don't know why I ramble but anyway I hope you enjoyed it regardless because let's be honest we all watch YouTube just to kind of let off some steam and relax and kind of watch something that can help us be a little mindless for a little bit and we don't have to think too much <laughs> But, I hope you guys enjoyed it regardless, and I love you all. God bless you. Bye.